even today still use those that, that formula. And when they see us on stage, and when cats see us do their autograph, and they see the tag form, they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, yes, we really do it. It's real. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, real, yeah. real, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And we still use these tools because why not? That's where we came from. Killer, killer, bo- 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official, dot com. <laughs> you need the television app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. Off the bat, I gotta say, big shout out for the non Zoom background. You gone for the real, gone for the oh, real. Yeah, nah. <laughs> no games. <laughs> like with the green screen and everything? Nah, not me, not me. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast striking with, striking with a vengeance, with great vengeance. Um, wow. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Huge shout out to anybody that's checked out the Kellervision app right about now. We're going transatlantic. To see one of the real ones out in New Jersey, East Coast. Oh my gosh, hold tight. Elder Sensei in the place. What, what are we saying, my brother? Peace, peace, peace. Brick City, Jersey, Ill Town, East Orange. Woo. Artifacts was good, y'all. <laughs> Yo, I am so happy to see you. I'm so chuffed. Hey, man, I'm, I'm happy to be well and to be here with y'all myself. What's the, what's the weather doing over there? It's looking pretty, uh, pretty right where you are. Uh, right now, it's a little, little gray, a um, little rain. But uh, we had a little taste of spring a couple of, last week. But uh, yeah, it's, we back to the real numbers of the weather. But it's all right. It's getting warm. Yeah, and, and I did off the bat say I, I gave you esteem credit for uh, very similarly to myself. You know, it could be any time of the day, any sunshine, rain or fall. But as long mm-hmm. as we haven't got that weird Zoom background going on. Right, right, right. You got, they got the whole, I see you with the Rocksteady crew, everything, the jersey, that, all of that. Come on, you got baby. Got the yeah. in the background, tags, everything. So that's... You know, real life stuff. Real life stuff. You can touch it. It only gets realer than... Don't get no realer than that, does it? Right. And when we say real, artifacts, crew, and a solo artist in your own right, and for way longer than I think most people tend to realize. Mm. Um, Bo, what I've been looking forward to on this particular chat is to chow down on some hip-hop shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Graffiti. B-boying. Mm-hmm. The real, like, you embody that on a day-to-day. And you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, you can't have many conversations with people like that that have experienced right. all the four pillars of, of, of B-boy shit. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's like, you know, I, I tell my son, and I tell a lot of younger cats, you know, as my age group grew up with hip-hop, it was from the beginning. So... Yeah. It's a lot of people that just gravitated toward one part of it mm-hmm. that they was good at, whether it be DJing, whether it be b boying, MCing, DJing. It's just they we learned to do all of it. So I started off as a b boy first, yeah. and then at the same time got into graffiti, and with the father that I had was not pretty much letting me go outside to uh, you know hit the walls and anything like that. So at my age, 12 or 13, I wasn't able to do that, but I was doing it, you know, in my neighborhood, in my in my room. He mm-hmm. saw it like, yo, you think you're going to be out there writing on walls? You crazy. But I'm like, but, but that was what we did. And then when we got through, you gained that element, I went and gravitated toward the, the ramen part. And as you're doing the ramen part, you're around DJ, so you pick up DJing as well. So... A lot of conversations with my age group, I can have like that. But mm-hmm. because the everything is immediate and fast and there's not too much to learn today, it's mm-hmm. all instant. You know it like the Matrix when you dial in. You know, it's not like that today because everything is in front of you to be easy. And that's the learning thing with hip hop where so far as being futuristic. When you're talking about learning, the elements of hip hop is few that can say they learn all and been able to use the tools at the same time and doing what they do. Oh, my God. Yeah, you literally just said it. Isn't it weird that when you think of back in the day when you thought the future of hip-hop, it was definitely not what you'd expect now? No, no, definitely not. Well, I mean, 
I think you're right. I think the attention span of not just, hey, I might just add as well, not just the youngers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're talking about general here. For real, like to have a conversation with anybody about stuff now, uh, e- even the architects, they fall foul to what perceptively they have. Well, they they think young people want to hear. Mm-hmm. When the truth is, if you really just break down the honest truth and what makes the components of hip hop work and work so well, you know, you you can't just fly through that shit. You know, you no. have to really break it down, don't you? Like, like people people would have to see it in a performance element, like performance of being say active. So, like with with Tame, I tell everybody in all interviews even today and our group he is the graffiti in a whole as a, a person where you say the way he rhymed he was a b-boy too and he can dj and this guy's my partner so that's how much we related to what we was doing but he was gravitated to a graffiti level of where like i want people to understand that in jersey there are and have been few artists that have been able to use their graffiti name in the world as a performer. So people know that he's active in doing both where, you know, he's able to use it. So when, when you talk about all of the things that we spoke on in one song, as far as wrong side of the tracks, yes, it was a graffiti song, a graffiti anthem, but we spoke about being a B-boy and being a DJ because even though the practice is not there today, we know that when they watch and put all these documentaries out Mm -hmm. and the cats that say didn't grow up in New York, to hear them say they didn't grow up with that element of, say, Flash and Cedric and Cedar and Mm -hmm. Herc and all of this, it it, it was, that's the power in what we was doing to where everyone has their, even where you were, even where you're from, Mm -hmm. everybody has a version of what we know elemental wise of what to do and when you're putting it into play and people get to witness it like today those things don't exist to to show so when we do it and even today still use those that that formula and when they see us on stage and when cats see us do their autograph and they see the tag form they're like oh wow i'm like yes we really do it it's real (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, real y'all you know what i'm saying and we still use these tools because why not? That's where we came from. It is habitual. Like, I don't even think I've ever signed my real signature as much as I've done my tag. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone... If you're really into that shit, you wouldn't have. You know, it just doesn't happen. Right, right, right. Like, that. <laughs> like, it's your tag. It's not a signature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That could, you know, yeah. Um, that's your moniker. That's, that's what you go about. Yeah, exactly. Um, When you talk uh, about because let's just also remind ourselves like in this fast approaching what day is it today we're going super fast on the super highway information is being spread Mm -hmm. and then the the attention span of seven seconds and it's a new thing it's crazy to think that hip-hop back in the day uh made so much noise over on your side they translated over a reasonably short period of time across the fucking world Mm -hmm. No internet. That's just this is the other right. thing. It was a phenomenon. Do you know what I mean? It was a powerful thing that like, and that's what powerful things do. That's what music does. Like, even to this day, like you said, I I had no idea I would be going to Europe to witness what I've seen in jazz artists happen with hip hop artists. So like a lot now. of people, a lot of people at home, even though it blew up here try to understand how it is that we go to all these different countries that may not probably speak English, like say going to Japan. Yeah. And they try to understand like, yo, how is it that they know, bro? I'm like, listen, it's worse now because of the internet, but it's also good because of the internet because yeah. it gave us a, a bridge to, because the only way we was doing all of this was to fly and get there. Mm-hmm. And, hours, hours and, hours and, the way, and the way hip hop became to be in Europe a lot was, and I've seen it, and I've been with these cats working with them. It would be a guy in the town that does go back and forth to New York when it was a time where labels had promotional records and they'd give them out to um, DJs or whatever. 
So he would these cats would go to New York, go to all the stores, go all the shops, get all the gear, ship it back home. They might have a store, you know, but that guy is the guy in the town that everybody knows is the guy that brings hip hop to the town. That's it. So these wind up being the people that we work with, being a promoter, with being uh, a, a agent. They are the ones. And so with the internet, that became these guys. And these guys got to use that in a way to advance, to bring us even more. So when you talk about the festivals, you talk about, you know, all these festivals have, even today, when you talk about Hip Hop Camp, things like that, Alpha mm. Fame, they all have elements of the of hip, the hip hop culture there because they know that that's important too because the most draw of the artists that come are from my group from the 90s mm-hmm. because that's where it became uh, became to be and kind of like where it stops when you talk about artists that go back and forth to even have the certain artists to come they don't bring everybody nah. so yeah they have the mainstream artists there but the more people that come over to Europe to perform are cast of my caliber and such because they know that's affiliated with what we're talking about right now so yeah, for sure. you know it, it became with the internet it became so much bigger because it was easier to get you know, I look at it like basketball you look at all the European basketball art, uh, basketball players that come to over here look what we doing yeah everything is three pointed three pointed three point I, I love it but it just shows you how we even had to adapt to this movement that was created through the internet to learn it faster, learn it better, to be more involved in it. Because even if you're far away, you're able to get into it even way more now. You know what I'm saying? Look what we're doing. Yeah, you know, even just, the way we're talking. Oh, well, it's just about to say, at this that's point the, as well. That's the advancement. That's the advancement. And this point right now, um, when we talk about hip hop camp, big shout to Afro and also big shout mm, to yes. Spice, Spice from the Brotherhood. Indeed. I know that's, that's our peoples right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You, and just for anybody that might be a little bit unclued up, because, you know, we're, we're getting into it deep pretty quick. Right. Um, artifacts, duo, New Jersey, from the 90s era, mm-hmm. wrong side of the tracks, of course, um, Rock and a Hard Place being the album. And I, I, and, and I think what separates you, you guys from the rest of the pack, if you don't mind me saying. No, yeah, be my guess. Bro, I feel like because of your understanding and involvement in the four corners of hip hop, the breakdancing, the MC and the DJ and, and the, uh, the, the breakdancing. There's an authenticity there. And, um, and unlike the others that were of, of the time, um, you kind of carved a bit of a cult classic based on your understanding of the, the roots of the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, not many, not many did that, did they? That, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know entirely you, where... You're you know, right, you're right. You know what I'm saying? I think that's why you had so much um, applaud when coming over. And more so than ever, because of that cult status, you'll probably be the first ones to be called when it comes to like, yo, we need some, we need some, you know. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. And, and, and I think that's, you know, we're making that song... We didn't realize at the time how many people was still like us. Because yeah. when you talk about the time frame when we did that song, nobody was talking about four elements of hip hop. Nobody was talking about graffiti at all. Like it was yep. just, you know, it was just happening. So, and KRS One uh, did a, a Hot 97 quick commercial review of the song. Like numerous songs, he would just, you know, uh, review. Right. during the commercial. So he said that it's crazy that it took a group from New Jersey to make a song about graffiti that started in New York. Yeah. And he, even when he gave us a shout out and uh, MCs act like they don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like people always ask us when he's, I reside like artifacts from the wrong side of the tracks electrified. I'm like, people are like, yo, y'all know him? I'm like, um, no, like, you know, <laughs> we've met him a few times, but it's like, you know, that's just in respect of him acknowledging the fact that, you know, we sparked something in him where he made an album, gave us a shout out, and then made Alpha Fame, you know, his own version of his ode to graffiti. So, you know, we know that even where we're from in New Jersey, that we are considered the more hip-hop group in, with, out of Jersey 
uh, officially because of, of what we did. And we didn't realize how many people, like I said, was like us to say, like, we're still into the craft like that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, whereas, like, you look at a brother like Cause, big time graffiti artist mm-hmm. to yeah. the fucking max. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where he's, you know what I'm saying, blow it up to the yeah. extreme. But that just shows you, you know, he started, he's Jersey City dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, it shows you where it can go commercially when you stick to your guns and you make people uh, cater to you as an artist mm-hmm. rather than him catering to the masses or uh, yeah. commercial masses, so to say. So yeah, with yeah. us, with us, you know, we get called to do a lot of shows like Hip Hop Camp and you know, a lot of shows like Alpha Fame and and, and even in um, uh, the one in Switzerland. Oh, man. Um, a, a, a Royal Arena, you know, because we come from a time and still today making records in a time where maybe, you know, what we're called to do is what it is, you know, and to have that uh, re- remembrance of cats that was responsible for something that we didn't even know ourselves was going to happen like that. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. when you, you see the hardest dudes come up to you, I'm in L.A., you got S.A. dudes coming up to you, and they like, yo, bro, we been painting to your music. You understand how I'm like, because I'm looking at them like they about to come up to me like, yo, I'm like, what's about to happen? Oh, shit, I'm and in they, and they And, they, and, they, and they're in the inner hip-hop kid come out and, and express themselves how they feel, what the song meant to them. We had no idea, man. Yeah, for sure. You didn't treat it like a flavor of the month, and that's the difference. Like, with all due respect to the Fat Joes and Karis Ones, it's like they needed the likes of you to remind them about what mm-hmm. you know. And then all of a sudden, it but it, that must also have come with its um, its own baggage because, like you say, you're in situations where you're like, "Damn, okay, I'm getting." Yo, the, I had no idea I was appealing to such a broad demographic. Mm-hmm. Graffiti is such a broad demographic. It's like right. it it is it is and it isn't hip hop. I mean, I I know that the general narrative is it was started in New York as as Karis. Quite right. He to 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 you know to balance the argument out. Bronx, New York made it what it mm-hmm. became. But, you know, then there'd be people from Philly, like Cornbread, that right, would be right. like, yeah, they're, they're, they're side of here. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at, at the end of the day, though, it had it has such a broad appeal. It's bigger than hip-hop. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it's, graffiti is everything. Yeah. Which, everything you look at, everything you see advertisement-wise. Yeah. I, I see, I watch Justice League, Justice League animation movies, and I see damn good graffiti in these movies now. <laughs> Video games, how they enter, interface it with the game and get real graffiti artists to do the artwork and not look like some old crabby shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's when you know people are taking it more serious than in the past because, like they said, it was just, you know, is that artwork? Is it just scribble scrabble? Mm-hmm. Which, to these days, they know it's more than artwork. This is is a universal thing that you will see and it just attracts your eyes and mind. Transferred itself across the, you know, the, the, uh, it's, I mean, it's so deep. There's, there's like 40 or 50 years of mm-hmm. kids turning into, you know, adults knowing what graffiti is. And it's such a given to see it, you know, and, uh, it must be really hard for people, authorities, especially to, to, to justify taking it down, let alone right. <laughs> their, their moral principles, as especially a today. <laughs> yeah. I had made a point one time on a, on an interview. We was on a radio station with a, it was a police officer on there, and I said, uh, "It's funny how when it's time for uh, presidential elections and and city elections, when you have all these signs and stickers of vote for this guy, vote for that guy, that's not considered vandalism to you, but it's they sticking them everywhere." Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but and and it's to be what to be seen for you to you know the it, it's almost in the same view of what we're doing. We want you to see our name, how colorful and bright. It's like you vote for this guy for mayor, like yeah, it's big as hell because they yeah. want us to see it. It's an advertisement, but for us, it's more than just that. It's a it's to show people your your fame of your artwork, and which they can't say is vandalism or not because. You know, we're doing the same thing. It's just back in the day was on a train that they didn't understand why it had to be there. Why does it have to be on the train? Why is it moving through? Why do you want it like that? Because that's 
what was the thing to do. And that was the thing that was exciting and it was innovative. And it was just, you know, it, I say all things wasn't meant to stay the way they were. Graffiti was supposed to branch out. Hip hop was supposed to branch out the way it did. Because if it would have stayed in the Bronx, we wouldn't have not be having this conversation at all right now. At all. Nope. It wouldn't be artifacts. There wouldn't no, be. No, no, no. We wouldn't have been influenced to even make the be the way we were growing up. Certainly no killer killer, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bro, to be fair, I'm I'm like creatively, of course. I'm I'm fucking, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm like your offspring, man. I'm like your kids, man. Like, I, I grew up listening to, and, you know, it'd be criminal because all my boys, I remember us back in the day listening to your record. Big shout out to Porch mm-hmm. One. We would literally be like bumping your shit hard. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the, the biggest fan, you know, it's, it, and it's just, it's awesome. Like you say, that hip hop and the elements and everything, because it's, it, okay, it's to a point of no return in some aspects, but you know what? It was destined to be that right. way. On the same subject, actually, of progression, um, New York at the moment, I don't know, you know, who, I don't know who's been eating their Wheaties this morning, but there is a <laughs> lot, there's a lot of, like, whole cars up, moving. I don't know how they're doing this. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff lately, and it's happening. I don't know how it's happening. I've seen a lot more like uh, cats doing little free cars mm-hmm. and stuff like that passing through, but like I don't know. I've seen some New York stuff, no different than I've seen cats in Germany doing whole cars. I'm like, you know, I, <laughs> yo, they, and they, I seen something. I don't, I, I don't know if this was New York. I seen some dudes get off the train, and while the train was waiting to go out again. The police security guards was all standing there. These oh, dudes was we got out of the car and was wow, was going nuts. Like they did it so fast. It was like maybe like 10 of these dudes did the car, got back in, and oh well, just ran away. The wow. cops couldn't do nothing because there were so many of them. But yeah. they were doing like whole like throw-ups real, real quick. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy now. This is some because they got all these cameras everywhere, but these dudes were all masked up. You ain't see nothing. But for them to do that so fast, I'm like, look, you can't stop it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter. It, and, and to see these dudes, I know they're young. Mm-hmm. So to see these these cats doing this now, like, on a, on a scale like that, because they know they're being watched. It's more famous now. It's very viral. And yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then don't let them be dumb nice with it, too, at the same time. Because they go up. And I'm like, oh, they're going fast. Like, oh, they putting it up. So it's, it's wild now, man. Like, you know. I don't know if people really understand like what that's like to do that. Like, cause I've heard team tell me stories of being in the yard, getting chased and dogs, and you just scared to death, heart rate going so fast, you can't concentrate on what you're doing, and it's dark. So to know cats that's like that and to have that that rush, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if you're just throwing up a tag real quick, a lot of people need to know that feeling because. Is a, is, a, is a feeling of like, you know, knowing that when you walk away, a lot of people are going to see it. Mm-hmm. Or you go bypass it again, it's either going to still be there or bust. But that's like, yeah. to see them cats doing that, and to know that it's people who dare doing that, that's brave. Brave. So you know, I think some of it is, is um perhaps it's the, the kind of lab rat generation where kids have been so used to seeing a, a security camera. So, yeah immune to it almost like oh well of course we're going to be on instagram because in you know instagram let's remind ourselves and instagram came out when like 2008 or something 2009 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that some kids out there were are now 11 year years old were, and yeah they've known instagram forever and, and they know that that's the you know that's the tool to the street yeah. to be famous it's the only one that they Quick. probably know you know that and 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 Grown, grew up with it to a point where now they're active on it because yeah. they're older now to understand what that what that is for them. Yeah, what and I like the TikTok, about it. TikTok is even worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and this is why they like it because TikTok is their version. Yeah, instant. Yeah, it was already Instagram was already there. That was that was just something of a given. But like TikTok is a new version of it, so that's mm-hmm. I guess that's the deal. Um, uh, yeah. What I, 
What well, elements I do like about what's going on is that uh, the art isn't just in the final piece. The art is in the attack and the mm-hmm. the measurement and the, the yeah. It, it's 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 a dance, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and it's a little bit. It is a lot more artistic than in the past. When you talk about a lot of the graffiti artists today, mm-hmm. uh, it's more detail. It's, it's not just about lettering. Uh, it's about uh, portraits and some. Uh, just focus on that, mm-hmm. and it's about cru- more more crews than ever, mm-hmm. and it, you know, and it's really like so much to say. Like it's hard to outdo each other. So a lot of these cats wind up working together because yeah. of the money that's involved. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of cats want to still paint, but a lot of cats know, you know, if I'm a paint, I want to get some bread for it. Yeah. You know, so it's because of this uh, infatuation outside of the gallery with, with with graffiti now, where it's like, you know, a lot of commercial spaces got a lot of, you know, buildings that they own that, you know, look fucked up. And they're like, yo, you know, I'll get these young dudes, you know, or this guy I heard of that, if you want to make my building dope, you know, I, I'd rather you put something up nice and I give you permission to do it so you can take your time. Gentrified. So I, I see a lot more people opening up in that way too to let these cats, you know, get their shit off. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that too. Um, yeah, ain't nothing beat though. I know what you're saying about the technical levels, but n- nothing quite beats a Zephyr tag or a quick or a scene. Nope. Like, nope. S- scene. Oh, Jesus Christ. Still you know? going, still going. The levels are crazy. The levels have gone up, but then there's something really purist and f- just out there cool with, with some of the older stuff back in the day. Expl- yeah. Expl- I tell you what, actually, this would be a good. Um, so go to, go, explain to me in as, as much detail as you can that hip hop period that you grew up in and what it was like in New Jersey. We always hear about what went in the Bronx and what went yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what really happened in New Jersey? How did it feel? Give me, give me this, give me the black and white kind of grainy version. Well, for for us in Jersey, New York treated us the same way they treated everybody else because we wasn't from New York, but we right next to them. Mm-hmm. So you know. Growing up in Jersey, coming up with hip hop, it was new, it was a New York thing. You know what I'm saying? Because we knew that's where it came from. That's where it was broadcasted from. That's where we watched videos from before they even came on to MTV. So you had video music box coming out of New York. And you know, we had early representatives in hip hop to look at, whether it's Lati, uh like Kim Shabazz, you know, like those were our first. Guys, we knew when we saw on two back. That's you know the God. That's that. Those are our gods right there. Like I, I talked to like him every every other day. You know what I'm saying? Like it's nothing. And my man, man. He, he, he's still the same. <laughs> he still look the same. You know he, he he's grown. You know he still do music. You know and and he's like wow. a brother to me. So Dude. you know with us, we were always on the outside looking in, but we're like. If you notice with us in New Jersey, we don't sound like nobody else. Like we have so many different artists and we all don't sound the same. Mm. But, you know, that's what makes us good. You know, and that's what separates all of us. Because within all of our groups, whether it's Artifacts, whether it's Red Man, whether it's Naughty, Lords, you could tell who everybody, we all listen to the same people. But you could tell as we grew up, you could, you, we heard Red Man could be with EPMD. You know what I'm saying? We we can you can affiliate me and Tame with Brand Nubian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it makes it makes sense because we gravitated toward them as artists. Oh, so, thanks to that X as well, by the way. I know. No you doubt, no doubt. Pieces to, right to X, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so like us, we had a lot to prove. We couldn't go to New York. Like when me and Tame was coming up doing shows before we even dropped the album, we were doing a lot of lyricist lounge shows, a lot of shows in New York. Well, we could not say we was from Jersey when we when we first got up on stage. But what would happen? We would wait, we would wait till after we was done. Because if we went on stage, if we were if we went up on stage saying that yo Jersey, blah, 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 boo, 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 oh, boo, we would down? get knocked oh, down. Boo okay. first, you know what I mean? Like so, we would wait till after we was done with the show. That's cold. Because a lot of people when they saw us on stage, a lot of I'm, I'm wearing polo, Tame had dress, a lot of cats thought we were from Brooklyn. And then when the video <laughs> came, when the, when the video came out. And they saw New Jersey transit buses. They saw New York police cars. They're like, oh, they from Jersey because we knew. 
Like you gotta be nice first. Yeah, and New, then York, they New York you. ain't just giving you no free card to just come through and you know mm. do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So we knew you had to get a pass, and our pass was going to stretch in Barbito. You know, and these things were things that people in New York didn't think that New Jersey artists were capable of. I'm talking about from graffiti standpoint to b-boying, and this is where I will always explain that you'll be right there. Mm-hmm. We can see y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We see your whole everything. You know what I'm saying? We just not in it, but we always had to feel like we had to prove ourselves to New York. And over the years, through the music we've been putting out and the artists we've been, mm-hmm. we've been able to get that love. And give the love back to Castle New York. Because Castle New York, no. You can ask the best of the Castle New York. Ask them what happened when they come to Jersey. <laughs> ask them what happens. They know. So we 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 have our own upbringing that, you know, when you look at the artists, whether it was Latifa, you, you know, you look at Tresh, you look at Poor Righteous Teachers, you look at King Son. Wow. I can wow. go down a whole list of people and from Jersey. And also different, that's, like you say, also different. Yes. And we all don't sound the same musically at or verbally at all. Yeah. I can relate yeah. to you with the, the whole New York thing. I mean, thank, thankfully, I ha, I ha, the beatbox was definitely on my side. I and, and, cut and my chop- it's, super, it's super nice because I saw you, I saw it live in my face. <laughs> my <laughs> so, guy. <laughs> so, I can, so I know how, how it was probably be for you. Like, this dude coming over here like this? Like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm, a, I'm a pro. I'm a pro. Trust, Trust me. I'm not, I just don't speak English. Until you've done the beatbox, don't Word. speak. Don't, <laughs> and don't say you're from Jersey before you start the song. Yeah, Nothing. Exactly. Just do your thing, and then when you finish, like, all right, I'm going back to UK. I'm going back to Jersey. I'll, I'll talk to y'all later. Yeah. What? Right? From where? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's how it happens. Totally. And then all of a sudden, like, similarly to myself, but obviously amplified by God knows what. I mean, I guess from your side, like, yeah, you got, you suddenly got this huge payoff of attention on Jersey along with the, you know, like, for mentioned, but um, I think you guys, as as somebody who ain't from America, for mm. starters, it's you're an observer. Now, I wasn't originally from London. I was mm. even more of an observer. And I think when you're removed from the 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 the, the area and you're off radar and you're watching this thing happen, mm. do you felt particularly being so close, but being in New Jersey, did you feel like actually I? I appreciated this stuff a lot more growing up, listening to it and taking it all in more than somebody would be like living in the Bronx would? Mm, I I will hope to say that it would be the same effect because like I said, at the time when you're listening to Molly Maul, you're listening to Red Alert, we're all hearing the same thing at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like for, for all of the artists that come out of New York, for the outside to hear them and see them, it was the same way that I did, but because I'm right next to it, we had access to Video Music Box to where mm-hmm. you had a video show before MTV came out. Mm-hmm. Even if he came on at night and he would change the time to the afternoon to it got to be uh, finally to be after school. So after school, we would run home because we knew Video Music Box was coming on. So Wednesday, you had a new video, Nervous Thursdays and Fridays would be just blackout, play everything new. So that was our outlet to see early LL Cool J videos, Run DMC, Houdini, all the all the old throwback videos. Mm-hmm. So I, I would think that um, out of state wise, yeah, we probably had an advantage because we would access, we would ra- able to access the radio. Like I remember when when I was young, I used to try to just go through the radio, just even go through the station to see if any hip hop would come on. Mm-hmm. But that's how I found the. World Supreme Team show on on ninety one point five, and yeah. because like Long Island, New York had radio shows. You would, we would get those sometimes through the frequency. So it was a lot of stuff that we were able to find compared to somebody outside of New Jersey. So, was but it in bund- was it in abundance? Did you would, would, would you literally dial in? Because the way you were explaining it right then, it was just a case of right defuzz, find it, stay locked. It, was there yeah. a lot of stations that were playing hip hop back then? I, I, yeah, because like say like like um, if you knew, so like after Molly Mall and then would go off at eleven and twelve o'clock at night, you could go down the dial to one hundred five point nine. And if you was close enough to New York and you, your radio was good, 
You can catch the DNA and Hank Love show uh, at, 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 after the Awesome Two show. So, but yeah. only if you knew about these things, you would be listening because a lot of times, you know, uh, through word of mouth, that's how you found out about the stations and making tapes through your friends. So, you know, that was what came to, when you start sharing stuff like that. But when you would tell your man, like, yo, DNA Hank Love come up, but see, because you heard about it through somebody else, you wouldn't know that listening to Marley. Marley and them not gonna tell you to go to listen to Awesome Two or go to listen to DNA Hank Love, but because you was a fan of it and you was looking for it, you found it. So like how I found Supreme Team Show, it was in the afternoon, and I just I don't know why I did it. I was I was in my room. I had a little gym set in there. I, I just took a break. I was going down and I just let me see something. And usually, when you get to the lower numbers in the stations, they turn to be jazz stations. Right. So 89, 89.9 Stretch and Barbito show that station used to be a jazz station. That's why sometimes the jazz station wouldn't even let them come on. No and way. Then, and they would they would go off. When they would go off on their show, the jazz show would come on. Damn. So be, and, and 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 then there was another to 89.1. So these were jazz stations. You might find a rock station one day in the afternoon. I found some hip hop. I was like, whoa, what's this? But the only reason why I knew about World Supreme Team show because of through Malcolm McLaren watching those videos. Yeah, yeah. On a show called New York Hot Tracks. So only way, and you can't ask somebody outside of New Jersey and New York, Connecticut, maybe, yeah, all that, but you can't go down there to the South and say, yo, you heard of New York Hot Tracks already? <laughs> it's called New York Hot Tracks. They don't see these videos. So it's only for the tri state area. Boy, so it was a lot of people the ground, missing bro. that wasn't from here that we saw because we was closer to New York. Mm-hmm. You literally had your ear to the ground. Exactly. And you had to find it. There wasn't no, you know, and, and and to now know all of these dudes and awesome too is my brothers. I love them, you know, to be fans of them and going up to these stations and to be friends with them later on. You know, that's a testament to a true listener of them for years that, you know, that you still know them today. And I was just bugging out last yesterday, listening to Red Alert on the radio. I said to myself, like, damn. That's my I life. grew up listening to Red Alert on the radio, and he's still on the radio. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, it's beautiful. It might, I mean, and also, I might just add, it's testament to your authenticity that these, these iconic characters in hip-hop re- revere you and call mm-hmm. you a friend. That, that only suggests that you, you from ear to the ground to mm-hmm. break dancing to... I'm saying you were just you were on the right track, and I'm a, and I'm a student. I'm a student of the game. Student. It's so important to say, yeah, that's a real important point, um, because you never you never stop learning, do you? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Especially not this, and and being active in it still. You, I, I've learned to be patient and learn to let the things come as they may, and work with them in the best of my ability and make it work. And maybe back then I didn't have that same mentality because it was just, you know, we're making music, we're making music, we're trying to be nice, trying to be nice, nice making the music. Let's go on tour, let's do it. You ain't thinking about all the other things that come into play of being an artist because you were just doing it. And later on you gravitate toward the whole package and, you know, and we, and I'm grateful to be even doing this interview still, I'm grateful to still hit the stage me and Tame, new album coming out soon. Uh, Ooh, hold on, breaks, breaks, yep, breaks. Yep, what yep. did you just say? <laughs> hold on, what did you just say? <laughs> hold on, hold on. You can't just go bypassing that. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. New, new Artifacts album coming out this year. Have you just seen um, my arms shoot up with goosebumps? <laughs> Man, what the hell's he's going like, on here? Like, hold up, hold up. <laughs> yeah, produced entirely by Buckwild, D-I-T-C. What? Um, yeah, 10, 10 joints. Um, we got some a couple of guests on there. Uh, I can I can tell you now it's, it's gonna be uh, my man Afro is on the joint, and we got Razcast on the joint. My so boy Razcast. Oh. Yes, that's that's what we have room for on the record. The whole record, those me and Tame, a lot of scratching, a lot of bass, a lot of a lot of dark DITC ness. You know what I'm oh, saying? It's gonna be something that era, people will, will want to hear right now. And I was we was happy to work with Buck on this. You know, y'all could expect more music with Buck, but this record right here, 10 joints in the chamber, ready to go. Bringing it back. Bringing it yes. back. From the, from, exactly. And you said it right. From the beginning, we bringing it back. 
with a producer that made one of our biggest hits, and we ready to, and we got ten more to, to, in in the pocket, ready to go. Man, uh, the current climate of emceeing, mm. uh, definitely this feels all of a sudden it's like yeah 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 of course there has to be another artifacts album yeah man we ain't made one in over 25 years man so it's like you know we was about due i mean me and tame did a lot of solo records and and stuff like that we've been we've been back together since 2008 we've been back on the road on tour since 2012 and you know it was a it was a proper time to do this you know we got the label uh smoking smoke on records out in germany and um you know it's, it's about to be it's soon to be pressed done finished Hopefully, because with all this COVID and everything, yeah, the, all the dates got pushed back. So, you know, I would say hopefully by June that the record will be pressed and ready to go. That is so sick. That mm-hmm. is just, that's my, my evening, man. Well, your afternoon. <laughs> 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 that's cold. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, where to go from here? To, what, to think about, like, where, oh, oh, man. Like, again, it's just it, it just heightens the fact that the longevity of sincerity and or sincerity and authenticity and mm-hmm. just playing by the like you say you're always a student um and when you're when you're in the album when you're in the album process or when you're on tour or when you're having mm-hmm. to deal with xyz bullshit or when you're you know jet lagged and you forget you do forget the fundamentals and what brought you in the thing in the first place right. and what it is you're there it's it's actually the the mission brief is is bigger than you you and the, the project is actually it's hip hop. Yep. That's the mission brief. And and that was the reason why we had to make this album because for all of the people that sat back and watched me and Tame do solo careers, they always wonder like, y'all gonna do another album? Y'all gonna do another album? Oh, y'all gonna do another? Yes. We always said yes. We never said no. We just never knew what the situation was gonna be called for us to do it. But this was the perfect time. Uh, the COVID, you know, I would say didn't stop us from working. You know, it just made us work more. Uh, you know, I, I I pretty much said, like, you know, this is like, let's get this thing done. Because mm. we're not going outside no time soon. But mm. let's actually put it together in a way where, you know, let's not rush it. Because we don't know when we're going to be able to go back out to do certain shows. But it is certain things we can do. So I said, like, let's just still record, you know, and let's act like this nothing's wrong. Because mm. in the recording process, COVID don't have nothing to do with that. Yeah, you don't want to date it, do you? Nope, wanna... that's that's us still having to create. So yeah. with knowing that, we just were always, you know, on the level of like, yo, let's give these people what they want. You know, let's not, we ain't doing nothing too crazy where we like going away from where artifacts came from mm-hmm. or from our last album. It's now this is a, a whole another addition to the crate with one producer on the whole project that we worked with doing like a few songs with while I'm doing 10. So now we just gonna see how you know people feel about hearing their childhood come back to life mm-hmm. in a way of where you know somebody people you familiar named you familiar with, but never had an idea what it would sound like if Artifacts did a whole project with Buck Wild. Now you get to see it. That's crazy. Buck Wild's one of my favorites. Um, mm-hmm. Show from Show and Age as well. I mean, they're from the same camp, aren't they? But the, 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 the realist. And even they all have levels of how they sound different, but they still. Yeah, for sure. but, the, I think what makes that whole crew be DITC is the grit yeah. and the grimy and the dirtiness of and how clean it was still. Clean. And and, and it was so clean. dramatic. DITC, if I could say one word to express their sound, is really dramatic. Yes. Really dramatic. When you listen to show and AG records, I could I could like even with the newer records. He got a record called Show and A, and when they and when A is rocking on it, it's like you know he's he's compatible to Show. Like, it's almost like when you look at Show and the pictures for him, he's like like my little dude right here. He getting your ass. Yeah, he got <laughs> What's it saying? And, 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 he's on his own he, dick, and he, even and when he's lying he's on his stomach. Like yo, look, my man got beats. I will bust your ass on these shits. <laughs> like don't look, don't don't take my hype for his, for a weakness. I will bust your ass with these big ass words. Well, realist of the realist, for real. That's it. That's how he knew. Hey, how he met AG. He's like, yo, who this dude named AG? He sounded like a big dude. When he met him, he was like, oh shit, like, I right, bet, let's go. My man talking hot shit, and he looked like that. And even when I met him, I told him, I said, dude, like, just your, your ver- even and A is a battle dude. 
Like, that's one thing people got to understand about AG. AG is a battle dude. Like, his records don't reflect his, his what's the, what's the word I want to say? Yeah. His, it doesn't reflect his Statue. battle scars. <laughs> it doesn't reflect his uh, his mode that he, I've seen him go into a mode, especially when him and Party Artie, when Artie was alive, them dudes was like two animals on the on the court really? and just eating everybody up on the battle scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when I saw A like that, to me, it was like he reinvented himself from a dude that made records to a dude that can make records and battle. And even now to just sit back and make records and be an entrepreneur at the same time. That's just, you know, when I think of Buck and I think about how we got into the, you know, I, used, I even asked, hey, like, yo, how many of Tan get in DITC? We made it, we made records with all the producers in DITC. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we do that? He started laughing. He said, I don't know. You got to talk to the show about that. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, like you say, there's a there is a real refinement to to DITC's production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, you've yeah you've worked you've worked with all, all you've damn near you, yeah. only one diamond. We did some work with Diamond, but it didn't come out officially. But yeah, that's that's next. Like I'm 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 not gonna say that ain't gonna happen because okay, that's that's a, I think that'll probably happen with me and Sadat probably before it be it happened with me and Tank. Right, right, right. Well, see, I mean, more ears to the ground for the yeah, rest of us. Yeah. Do you think there's something about, I mean, when you talk about AG, yourselves, um, you know, God, like the 90s, the 90s um, fraternity. Do you feel mm -hmm. like, because um, you, like you say, you know, AG, yourselves, you know, you're, you're entrepreneurs, you're people that have gone on to do amazing things, but still do music and have, mm -hmm. and cross over uh, uh, relationships with, like you say, should Sadat X, you guys doing the album together, um, then going back to Tame again and a Buck Wild, mm -hmm. and then you know, Diamond, like there's so many, you know, like it goes forever, and uh, it just feels like you've it's like a fine wine, you guys have just been cutting your teeth, and like it's this is like this is that you're so robust, you know, what I mean, it's like mm -hmm. you, you can kind of mold to any situation because you've just like had those 10,000 hours, right, 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 and and that's a good way to look at it because. Like you said, I, it's funny you said that. I said that to my man. I was like, you know, uh, these the things that we do, like, there's no way to go backwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially when, you know, a lot of times we get asked, like, how do you stay relevant? It's really yourself. And how do you uh, react to the beats you may get uh, to what you want to say, it, it's what you're doing at the moment that mm -hmm. makes you still sound like, or makes me sound like Elder Sensei. It makes Sadat sound like Sadat and Tame sound like Tame. Beat wise, Buck sound like Buck Wild, but today Buck Wild and not 90s Buck Wild. Mm -hmm. So these things are, we're conscious of when we're making these records today. And and we understand that uh, through our track record, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to expect us to probably come, not say the same way, but in the same vein to not be so far away. Mm. So if anything, they would think that, yo, if they sounded like that back then, I can imagine what it would be like today because mm. we are in 2021. Mm. So we would have to think about that as well as artists writing what we have to write. And as far as, you know, who we're directing our music towards, and that's going to be people like yourself and like oh, me yeah. who pay attention to all the things that we're going to be doing. It's going to be people sitting there analyzing everything. So we know because we do it when we get the records from the artists that we wait for to put out records. So we damn sure know, you know, it's going to be people that's not just the average listener. It's going to be people that are our peers as far as MCs that's going to judge it too, because they're going to know they fans of our music just like we fans of theirs. So we are, trust me, y'all. <laughs> we know what y'all, we know. And y'all ain't, when every song come on, all y'all got to say is like, Oh, I bet y'all y'all better have, have done that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We, we was we on we on point with it. So it ain't nothing. All bases are covered. Again, like I, I suppose there's certain aspects of what you just said there. You you can have tough skin, but you know, like a hip hop audience, they don't play. They tell they no. tell it like it is. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like you know, and then especially today, because motherfuckers can say what they want. They home with this shit in their hand and on their fingertips. But like, yo, I'm home. I can say what the hell I want to say. I think that's the one thing in the internet that made it so like this because mm -hmm. you can say what the hell you yeah. want. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. And it's just like, I'm blacking out on you 
Mm-hmm. And where in the past that probably wouldn't happen because you had to be outside. You ain't mm-hmm. gonna walk up to a dude and be like, "Hey, yo, I think you wax, son. You shouldn't make records no more." But uh, that today you can do and not be in somebody's face and mm-hmm. they get their point across. And that's like a million, thousand million to other people too. To be fair, I got more respect. I got amples of respect that's for somebody to come up, <laughs> come up to Elder Sensei's <laughs> face and be like, "Yo, guy, I don't like your shit." I would have. <laughs> But that, but that's like all. That's why all artists we came up with that term, internet yeah. key thug, mm-hmm. and all that shit like that. Because honestly, and that's a lot of people, you would not say half of the shit that you're saying online to a person's face, even if if they wasn't a star, yeah, just a re- regular person. Like that's almost like the, the closest thing you can get to that that can road rage. For real, agreed. You know what I'm saying? That's the only time you can really get out of the car and pop shit to somebody. Like yo. You almost ran me over. We're fighting, and yeah. you can really and you got that whole energy, so it's gonna happen. But with they need to do like a catfish, thing, no. catfish for like people that are trolling. There needs to be right. some sort of catfish program, you know. And that's the only, and that's the one thing I don't like because I had some dude hit me up last week, two weeks ago, talking about, oh, Elder Sensei said the Artifacts album was coming out in the spring. It's already March. I'm like, really, bro? Ugh. And I commented him back like, yo, okay, so look, the record is still coming out. Mm. I can't control delivery and manufacturing and things of the sort. So a lot of my friends see me talk like that. I don't really try to comment on people, but with I saw that, and then he had no page, no face, no picture, no nothing. Mm-hmm. Then he came back to my man, comment and say, "Yeah, don't worry, the record ain't coming out till 2000, never." <laughs> oh, I could, oh, honestly, I had to block dude, but I thought it was funny. You know what I'm saying because I don't get too much traffic like that. So when I see it, I was just like, "Whoa, who's this? Oh, that's funny." I said, but like, you know, it's coming, y'all. Yeah. Like, Hell you know, yeah. I get it, but I get it. You want internet keys. They're done, I get it. Bro. I mean, it's it's when I click and I'm like, I've just sent something. And then literally 30 seconds after, I'm thinking, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I bother replying? Why right. did I bother? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here's here's at least 40% of my attention for the rest of the mm-hmm, day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Comments all day. Like, damn. Damn. Um, right. Question. As we're in the studio arena here talking about the album, give me, please, mm. would you give me, your most hip-hop moment that you can mm. remember ever in the studio? Mm. Man, I got a few. I'm all ears. <laughs> all right. Mm. Man, I could, I'm going to give you two right now off the top of my head. Wicked. Uh, we was in the studio recording for the second album and we had a song called, we got a song called This Is The Way, produced by VIC. Uh, we were doing, Chaos was actually doing the cuts for the record this day mm-hmm. in, the, in the lab. We was in Soundtrack Studios in Manhattan. Uh, the scratch he was doing was from Run. And when he say, and this is the way we rock the house. Cool, mm-hmm. okay. He's doing it. First pass, I like nah, chaos. Do it again. I think you need to do. You can do it better. So I, he kept doing it, and it, maybe like ten minutes later, the door opens up, and he's cutting, doing his, you know, going through it, and then um, the door opened in. We were on this side of the room. The door opened in this way, so we couldn't see who was behind the door. We just like, yo, who's that? Yo, his head peeked through the door. We was like, oh shit, why was it run? <laughs> No! Like, hold up. We was like, yo, hold up. So chaos is froze. We all froze. Me and the team like, um, he's like, yo, uh, y'all mind if I come up in the room? Cause I heard y'all scratching my voice and everything like that. We was like, fuck, keep in this damn room and sit right there. He said, Y'all mind if I watch? He's like, do we mind? Like, sit down. Chaos, go, go, do your thing. <laughs> so chaos starts right. I mean, like, yo, the 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 verse, the cut versions that's on the song was when Run was in the room watching Chaos do it. So fair. Word. So it's like, he really, wow. you know, and then the way he stopped the record and everything, my house. <clears throat> as soon as he did that, he looked at Run. Run looked at us. He stood up. He said, I'm good, man. Whoop. He said, I'm good, bro. See, look at that. That was the power of, 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 the, of the story. He yeah. said, I'm good. He said, look, man. He said, yo, I don't know when this coming out. Wow. He said, I just want to say thank you. He said, I'm, I'm highly impressed that your man over there. He said, but I had to come in the room because the way he was cutting, that shit, you know, I was in the hallway, like, who who in there? But I'm like, yo, but for you to pop in, that was like magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
You were that, just that there. Was, That's mad. That was just crazy. That was a yeah. crazy moment. And when we was uh, when we recorded collaboration of mics for the second album, right? That day was nuts because uh, you know we did the song me, team, Lord Finesse, and Lord Jamar. And but the day of the session, who shows up in the studio? Showbiz, Fat Joe. Uh, uh, Fat Joe's DJ, that was mm-hmm. hilarious. He came in the room and went straight to chaos because he saw him at the turntable. He said, yo, um, I'm going to be doing the cuts on the song today. He was a big dude. So we... <laughs> <laughs> he was sure a big dude, so we, we didn't even know like what to say because Fat Joe was like, he, a word is born. Fat Joe came in the room and was like, yo, my man's doing the cuts. And he was like, uh, that's when he went to chaos. And I was like, yo, let um my man let Chaos do the beginning cuts. Like at the beginning of the song, you cool with that? And we this is our song. And we was like, okay, <laughs> they just came in with a whole idea. And but like the whole energy in the room was crazy. So it was like, you know, all of us is in the room, we taking pictures. Um, you know, and I, I just, you know, that you could tell in the way we were spitting in the song, like everybody was was impressing each other, but the whole session was nuts. And I remember after the song was over, Fat Joe came to me and Tame. And he really said the song was dope. And to fast forward, I, we saw Fat Joe in Central Park a couple of years ago, the Stretch and Bobbito movie presentation mm-hmm. in Central Park. He came up to me and said, oh, what's good? And I was like, damn, you remember my name. He said, why not? He said, y'all artifacts. I'm like, Shh. Yeah. So you never know, you know what I'm saying? People going to remember you as, as an artist like that. But, you know, oh, wow. I remember that day, him coming in the studio and saying that. And, 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 and look, when my man started cutting, I had no problem with that shit because <laughs> we was like, oh, my man is super nice with it. Like, do your thing, homie. But like, don't, I ain't even gonna bother you. And the shit came out night. He was, and after he was done, he was even like, yo, thank you for letting me, you know, do that. Cause he said, yo, I'm, I'm a fan too. We like, damn. Like, so the, the Bronx came in the building and that was a Bronx, New Jersey song. Uh, even for, you know, Jamar might have lived in Brooklyn, but he's from uptown too. So that yeah. was dope. That is one hell of a double whammy that, story, that, boy. And we, and we had to be, like, on point. Like I said, us coming from Jersey, yeah. we had to impress a lot of people to get to, to that point. I think Fat Joe sees the, 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 the B-boyisms in you guys. Like, you know, he's yeah, a I, I, I think I think that, you know, and I got a Fat Joe, probably won't even remember this. Uh, me and Tane was in New Rochelle, and Brand Nubian had a show. Yeah. And it was, like, in the afternoon. Uh, it was the early show. Huh. And um, we was we had we was in the club early doing a sound check with them, and we was me and Tane was sitting down talking to Vance Wright, Slick Rick, Slick Rick DJ. Okay. We was like, damn, like this is be when we you know just a normal a sound check. For well, right, it's all sitting and talking to Vance Wright. <laughs> so um, Fat Joe came and sat at the table, and he looked at me and Tane. I heard about y'all. Jamar and Sadat been talking about y'all a lot. I want to battle you. I was like, what? No <laughs> right way. there, Vance. And I look, I I probably never even said that before. I'm not sure, but like Vance Wright was at the table, like, come on, Joey, you know, lead him alone. We 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 come having a conversation. So he's like, nah, yo, I heard about these dudes. Like, yeah, y'all must be nice if Jamar and Sadat talking about y'all. We was like, damn. So we had no idea Jamar and Sadat were talking about us. And here we are in the corner sitting in the room with Vance Wright and Fat Joe won the won the battle. That was again another moment we was like, damn, that's that's we must be on our way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if he you're said on the right that. track. Yes. That's crazy. That's like uh, a trailer. I, I, I best describe a trailer destruction from the moment that you you guys were clocked. It's almost like synergy when click 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 mm-hmm. click click click. Yeah, Does, and can Jamar, you bottle Jamar that, said bro? It. Can you we bottle met that? Him and Jamar said that was his first hip hop moment, as far as like a fan experience. Me and Tame. For real? And then, yeah, and then then you know he asked me about that one day. He said, "Remember this picture right here? It was a picture of them at the State Building in Manhattan." In Harlem doing the show. I was like, yeah, that's the day we met y'all. He said, and who the fuck thought y'all would be artifacts today? I said, I know, right? It's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you think, um, I was about to say, can you bottle that? But actually, I want to be more, more specific. You know, when you, and speaking personally as well, you know, when you have those moments, it's almost like a weird zeitgeist where, what starts off as a weird imposter syndrome all of a sudden becomes your reality and you're mm-hmm. in this ride and things like that happen where you're just like, that's that's nuts. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, like, dude, like, for that, 
like for Fat Joe, we know this guy, the music and everything. For him to recognize us just from a conversation and to see us, that that meant, like I said, like something's about to happen for us. You know, no different than Tame calling Stretching Barbito for, you know, that's how we got on the radio. He made a phone call on the air. He he won the, the contest that week, that night. And even if I called the next week and did mine, it was off the strength of what Tame had did. And that's how we got the invitation to come what? up to Stretch and Bob to do our freestyle that we did that got us the deal. Wow. How did we know that was going to happen? That was just by miracle chance. You know wow. what I'm saying? But it also had something to do with Tame's skill that, that night and us together at the show to show people what we was made of. You never think stuff like that going to happen. You know, people always think that we got a story where you know, we sent out a bunch of demos and people, you know, we got these stories of rejection. Oh, you know, we did one 10 minute freestyle session that turned into me talking to you now. How much pride does that give you, bro? To know that you had, I mean, to, I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> just to know how far you took it. You know what I mean? Like you guys went, and this is again, it just it highlights that the, the fan support you have is like super mm -hmm. hardcore. Like the, and, I think and, it's and, tales like this that that show your salt as an as an artist, right? And I think it shows people that you know we just like them. You know what I'm saying? Like we just happen to rhyme. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people that meet us when they do, they be like, "Wow, like y'all just like me." I'm like, "Yo, look, I just we just happen to make records, but we just like a lot of people in this world. We just got a deal. And we made the most of it, and even after we got off, we kept going." Uh, there's a lot of people that was responsible for helping us get to a lot of places that we've been to, but I always tell Tame it start with us first. That's and right. And if we don't do what we do, there is no artifacts. There is no wrong side of the tracks. There is no come over to get down. Dynamite soul, art of facts, interview, nothing of the sort. And I and might add everybody go and check out their music if you have not heard any of those tunes. I mean, I know hip hop can be often as, as, as much of a deep dive as reggae mm -hmm. is and all the other cultures in the world that, that has a, a, a catalog. But trust me, if, if you know, if, if, if you know what your time is best spent on, it's getting into some artifacts for sure. Thank you. Thank you about that. Thank you. Uh, for real. Uh, did I mean, and, and also, uh, you know, the future's looking fucking bright. You know, you've got the album now that's in the pipes and mm -hmm. That it's just going to reignite amazing conversations like this and stories of people want that they want yeah. to feel in touch with a time and know that authenticity is there. And and the artists that they remember that that brought them some sort of hip hop joy is still around. Mm -hmm. You know, I got like five projects I'm about to come with besides Ooh. this artifacts record. Um, a couple of solo records coming. I got a, a record with my a partner of mine that I work with who I felt as though, like, you know, I didn't want to just put him out there to the sharks and wolves. Mm -hmm. I did a record with him together and his 14 joints we got that's going to come soon. His name is Big Joker, a Jersey representative and somebody I feel like a lot of cats I know deserve a chance to put out a record. So I, why not do, a, do one with him? Make sure he all right. It's only March. What are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> You just like throwing out albums and projects. It's like, yo. Oh this man, is yeah. I've been I've been busy these last few years. You know, I'm I'm hopefully next year it, it'll just be just you know me touring, you know, rather than just recording a lot of music. You know, I've, I've like I said, five albums ready to go. Uh, all of them getting mixed right now. Um, about to get into the process of photo uh, doing uh, photo shoots with a lot of these producers and artists that I've been working with. So you know. I hopefully, you know, when people get all this music, they're going to like it. But at the same time, you know what I was doing while this COVID shit was going on. We wasn't doing no shows. That's right. Exactly. Well, when you get, when the locks are unlocked and we're mm -hmm. able, we have to, we have to buck. When you oh, get yeah. to I'm, UK, I'm, 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 I'm going to be here. I'm going I'm to send you everything. You can get all the emails. All the, yeah. Matter of fact, I'll send you an email tonight of the single from the new, from the new Artifact Records. So you have it. Wicked. Nice. Wicked. Yeah, my brother. Thank you so much, L. It's been wicked. No man, yo, Keller. You, thank you, brother. You always good to me. Yeah. and I was. It was my pleasure to do this. Honestly, brother, uh, the people are going to be so happy. But trust no me, doubt. comments galore, people. You know what to do. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks again, the mighty elder no sensei sir. inside the place. Killer Keller podcast, doing it proper. Peace, yo. You stay lucky, L. Take care of yourselves, people. No Till doubt, next no time. Doubt. You too. I'll see you soon.
Peace. Peace.